Firstly, let's have a look at the ProjectWise Explorer interface on a data source that has work areas with the ISO 19650 framework implemented on it. So this is my demo data source and within here I've got a folder for projects and there is my work area and if I expand that we have a standard folder structure. And what we can see here is some folders for deliverables management so these are uh, storage area and transmittal responses and then location one and if I expand the location one folder we'll see the discipline folders. So within a work area you may have multiple locations and each of those locations would have the discipline folders within them and within each discipline folder we have a number of um, folders for different document types. What you see on your system might be slightly different to this but in principle it's the same there's two main reasons for setting up the folder structure in this way. Firstly, it's easy to navigate for you as the user. You'll be able to find your discipline within your area of the project easily, and you can see where you need to create specific types of documents. It also helps ProjectWise to apply the correct permissions based on role and workflow state. As an architect, I can go into one of these folders and I can create documents in here, and I can edit documents in here. But if I was to go into another discipline folder, I wouldn't be able to see any work in progress documents. I wouldn't be allowed to create any documents and I wouldn't be able to move any documents through the workflow. In fact, the only thing I can see in another discipline is documents that have reached, shared or published the workflow state. Now, the view I've created here is giving me some information that's useful when we're looking at an ISO framework system. So I can see the revision and version, I can see the suitability code, the document status uh, and the description which often uh, which is often useful. Now let's look at a document and its attributes. So if I press spacebar to open up the properties dialog box bring that across uh, we have the standard attribute layout under the general tab and if I go to the attributes tab we can now see specific attributes for this environment and these first six items make up the document code and we'll look at the document code in the next part. We also then have a requirement for a title, a revision note, scale and sheet size. The revision and version is managed automatically and when you create a document it, it has the initial suitability of S0 for a work in progress document um, which we would need to select a new suitability code at a later stage. Also here we're recording information such as who's drawn or who's created the file, uh, who's checked it, who's approved it and who's authorized it. Also if it gets rejected it will put the the name of the person who's rejected it in that box. And then all of this information is recorded in the audit trail the exact look and feel of this will vary from organization to organization uh, and even possibly project to project. So although this is the, the standard framework attribute layout, yours might vary slightly, but the principles are the same. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.